I want us to go to John chapter 20, verse 17. Wow, this guy's going to bury himself. Burial for Islam. Thank you, man. I think they paid you off to help us destroy Islam. But go ahead, read John 20, 17. Jesus said to her, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Okay, mm -hmm. question. So is this verse saying that the same God and the same Father that Jesus, the same person Jesus calls Father, is the same person that his brothers, his brethren, as you read here, he said, he said instead, go tell my brothers, not his worshipers, but his brothers, yeah. that, that he's going to ascend to his Father and your Father, to, yeah. your, to, to, to his God and your God. You ready for the answer? Sam, yes. Tell us what okay. this verse is. Now, Sam. Avery, watch the tap dance because he likes to take oh, yeah, the stick to the verse, Sam, and don't, don't have to cut me off. Zip stick your off. mouth, don't cut me off. Let me do it. Now, Avery, right. read for our fellow human being. Verse. Read John 20, 18 to 23 for the stone kisser here for us. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he said these things to her. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you as the father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and, the, and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Mm. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now, Avery, before you move on, I just want you to know the same chapter, Jesus appears and he breathes the Holy Spirit on them, something that only God does in the Old Testament, even in his Quran. And then secondly, Jesus gives them the power to forgive sins or to condemn people for their sins, right? That's correct. So who breathed on them the Holy Spirit? Was it the Father or Jesus? It was Jesus. And you won't find a single verse in the Old Testament or even in the Quran, which he believes, where someone other than God gives the Holy Spirit, right? That is correct. But now read 24 to 29. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Now, before you finish Jesus' response, did you know, Avery, that in John 20, 28, it says, and answered Thomas and said to him, I pen auto him, not them, one person, literally, and I'm going to give you the link so you can show it to people on interlinearbiblehub.com. It's o keriosmu ke o theosmu, literally the Lord of me and the God of me. So he, here Thomas, the same chapter, calls Jesus, who's standing before him, alive after his death, the Lord of me and the God of me. Now, you know what's amazing, Avery? What's amazing, Avery, what's amazing? Earlier in John 20, 17, when Jesus refers to my father and your father, my God and your God, did you know that that phrase, my God, your God, doesn't have the definite article? He doesn't say the God of me and you. He says God of me and you. And yet when Thomas calls Jesus his God, he says the God of me. Now, before you show my friend the Greek, read 29. Did you say shame on you? Stuck for Allah, get stuck for Allah. Or did he bless his confession? Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen? me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now, let me give you the interlinear so you can show everyone. Give can it I you. get in and oh, finish no, my question? Wait, wait. wait. <laughs> now, open this, this up for him. Ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Muhammad is ridiculous. You know, open it up for him. He doesn't need to read Greek. He can probably read the Greek the way he reads Arabic. Do you see it says, O kiriosmu ke o theosmu? You don't, you don't read article, The God of me? The God of, the God of me? Yep. What's your point? Okay, so did Jesus, did Thomas call Jesus the God of me? Yes. Do you, okay, okay. Now, yes. Okay, yes. Hold on. Yeah. Now here. Now, do you want to discuss this? Now, here you go. Here you go. Now, open this up. Let's see. Finish go to John 2017. 
you see it says here prostan patera mu ke patera homon ke theon mu do you see it says in the god of me but there is no definite article so now here's my question to you avery the same chapter where he quoted out of context jesus who's a man and one with us who refers to my father and your father my god and your god the same chapter later on Thomas calls Jesus the Lord of me and the God of me. So the Father is not just their God. Jesus is their God too. And in the same chapter, Jesus breathes on them the Holy Spirit, something only God does. And yet he's wondering, how can they be Jesus's brothers? Because they're of the same family. Through faith in Jesus, they become children of God. That's what John 1, 12, 13 said. Because Jesus, the unique Son of God, who's God in the flesh, came to make them children of God. Where's the problem? Thomas was not present the first time Jesus appeared to his, his 11 minus one disciples. He wasn't present. So therefore, when Thomas came the second time here that Jesus appears, this is why this is called, he's called Doubting Thomas, right? Because when he appears to him, verse 28, Thomas answered, my Lord and my God. And guess what's at the end of this? An exclamation point is there. Well, Look real close, Sam, Sam, Sam. Look closely. There's an exclamation point. So, for example, open up the Greek for him again. I want to. I know the argument. That it's an exclamation because yes, it's one, either one an exclamation of surprise, which is blasphemy according to Exodus 20 verse 7, and Jesus would rebuke him, not bless him. See, the guy thinks I was born yesterday, like Muhammad. In Exodus 20 verse 7, no Jew can take God's name in vain, which would be taking God's name in vain. It was an exclamation, "My Lord and my God," without no being blameworthy. Exodus 20 verse 7. So that means if it's an explanation of surprise or praise, Jesus would have rebuked him, according to Exodus 20, verse 7. But the context is clear. It says, I pen auto said to him, he was directing it to Jesus, my Lord and my God. That's why Jesus blessed the convention. So I know his pathetic arguments, just for everyone else, because I don't know if they understood that. In the same Gospel of John that he's misquoting, the reason why believers can call God their father is John 1, 12 to 14 tells you, right? It says, but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were yep. born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. So did you catch that just like Paul did in Romans 8, 3, John says that Jesus being the unique son of God, pre-existed with God and was sent into the world to become flesh, right? Remember Romans 8, 3? Yep. God in the fullness of time sent forth his son in the likeness of sinful flesh, yep. meaning the son was already there with God before he entered flesh, right? Yeah. Same thing with John, right? Same thing with John. John says the word became flesh. And like John and like Paul, John and Paul both agreeing, this unique son who's always been the son with the father he comes to confer on us the favor of sonship if we believe in him. That's exactly Paul's point, Romans 8, and John's point here. It is Jesus who in his love for us confers on us sonship. Yep. So he comes to purchase us and redeem us by his blood and then pour out the spirit in us so that by the spirit we are now united to Christ. And being one with Christ, we become children of God. It is Jesus who makes you sons and daughters of God. Right. So to then want to quote verses out of context, come on, man, don't do that to me. Yeah. Especially John 20, where it climaxes with Thomas saying, Jesus is the Lord of me and the God of me. I mean, exactly. come on, guys. And by the way, Emmanuel, his argument was this. Let me tell you what the argument is with John 20, 28. This is a typical anti-Trinitarian argument. Either Thomas was surprised and shocked, and out of shock and surprise, he goes, my Lord and my God. Right? You know, when you get scared, you go, oh, my God. Right? This is unheard of among Jews at that time. Even today, no Jew who respects the God of Israel and honors the Torah would use God's name flippantly in vain because that's Exodus 20, verse 7. Or they'll say that he was praising God. My Lord and my God. Like praising God the Father for raising Jesus. That doesn't work either because the text is clear. Said to him. Said to him. He was looking at him, directing it to him. You are the Lord of me and the God of me. And Jesus blessed that confession. So I really, man, I've heard these arguments when I was, when Avery was in diapers.